Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So, good evening everyone. My name is Tim Alfreds. I run NSC League and I'm here to talk to you about how important it is to create a social structure surrounding esports or competitive gaming. Imagine your son spends his days kicking a ball against the wall for six hours, all by himself. Would you just let him go on with it? Would you approach him and take away his ball and say, that's not good for you? I don't think so. You'd probably go up to him and say, you know what? You should join a football club. He'd cycle there with his friends. They'd probably watch the end of the previous match before he starts his own. They'd uh, play for about 45 minutes or so. Halfway through, they'd break for refreshments, very important. The coach would come in, analyze the game. Afterwards, they'd play the remaining 45. And when they're done, they'd probably meet with their parents, proud from the sidelines, have encouraged them. And they'd probably talk about anything and nothing with their friends, maybe even have a meal together. There's an entire social structure surrounding football. With gaming, it's a little different. When I was in, uh, in high school, I played RuneScape. Now, if, if gaming is nerdy compared to football or hockey, then RuneScape is on the nerdy end of gaming. So there is no way, there was no way I was ever going to tell anyone that I was into fighting dragons and trading armor. So what happened was I kept it silent my entire high school. At the end, in my final year, I found out that a friend of mine had been playing the same game for six years. Uh, I was relieved, I was excited, but most of all, I was astonished how this had not come up once in any of our conversations. Now, this is because gaming is stigmatized. And as an ambassador for esports, people often ask me to defend that gaming is a sport. But I don't think gaming is a sport. I think gaming is an esport. See, gaming is not physical, and sports are physical. And by arguing that gaming is a sport, people can then try and change that and saying, so you think you're here to replace regular sports with gaming. But I need physical activity. Everyone needs physical activity. Gaming is not here to replace sports. What I try to argue is that esports should have the same status as regular sports. So whenever I try to argue that esports should have the same state as regular sports, there are basically three main preconceptions that they have. First of all, they say it's unsocial, they think it's unhealthy, and they think it's addictive. Now, let's start with unsocial. I don't think it's unsocial. I just think that we live in a culture that thinks that this should be done behind closed doors. I do get where they're coming from, though. What they see is a person completely engrossed in their computer screen, having no clue what's happening around them. Now, <laughs> when you play football or when you play hockey, you're pl pretty concentrated on the sport you're doing at that moment. So what I see is when I play an eSport, I'm completely concentrated on my game. There's no time halfway to make a, a nice talk with somebody on the sidelines. That doesn't happen in football doesn't happen in tennis. I don't think gaming is inherently unsocial. I just think we promote it to be done behind closed doors. Secondly, people often say gaming is unhealthy. Now they think, presumably, that it's unhealthy because you're just sitting down for long stretches of time, just like these guys. But chess isn't considered unhealthy. Chess has status. In fact, there are lots of schools, my primary school even, who promoted chess club instead of going outside to, to play during the break. So gaming isn't really unhealthy because it's sitting down. That's not really the issue here. And then we get to addiction. Now that is something I need to address. When I was about 14, my parents got called up to the school because my grades weren't satisfactory. They said, uh, basically, I was playing too much Halo 3. Now, the school didn't really take my love for gaming seriously. They just saw a red and a blue spaceman. And they told my parents two things. They, say, they said, pull the plug from the Xbox. And they said, we're going to tell this to the parents of all the other boys in the class too. So what they wanted me to do is to ignore the fact that I really loved this. But it was a problem because 
It was true. I was addicted. The other boys in the class were addicted too. But the reason we were addicted was because there's no physical barrier in gaming preventing you from such doing it for such long stretches of time. If you'd played football for the same amount of time as I'd gamed, you'd die of exhaustion. So, but what they wanted to do is just say, stop doing it altogether. And what you're then doing is denying that there's a real interest for a kid to do something he loves. The way I think this should be treated is by creating a social structure around it. Create social activities around gaming, take it seriously. It will result in less hours of actual play, more enjoyment because you're taking it seriously, and less excessive behavior. If you play a game against a person at the same level as you, it's just as mentally exhausting as chess. I can say from experience that I would have loved to have played in the school Halo team, even if it meant playing four hours a week instead of 20. So, I set up NSC League when I got to university to create this social element. And this social element doesn't only address this unhealthy or unsocial aspect. It does something else that's really important too. There are actually a lot of problems in the gaming industry right now. 2014, for example, was the year of Gamergate. Gamergate was an outright sexist movement that targeted female video game designers in the industry, feminist cultural critics, with death threats and doxing. Doxing is a practice where they throw all your personal details online. And the reason it got so out of hand was because there was no public space to discuss this. There were no newspaper articles, there was no media coverage, no public discourse, no get-togethers in clubs and pubs where you can just talk about these kind of things. Everything happened online. Angry individuals behind their screens, behind closed doors. By opening up gaming and making it social, you can create an environment where you can pull these kind of exchanges out of the shadows regulate it as it's regulated in a social environment and preventing them from becoming so toxic as they did online. Now, so now the question actually remains, why did I do it at university? Now, first of all, uh, of course, higher education is at the forefront of social change. If you bring up an idea, then university is actually the best place to do it, the best place to do it in my idea. The other thing is that I realized I wasn't actually the only one who really needed a social aspect surrounding their gaming life. It's actually a team from NSC League. But whenever people talk about gaming or esports, they always talk in the same manner. 30 million people watch the event online, $80 million in prize money. Everything is about the top end. I can show you a beautiful picture, and it's going to look even better on the big screen. This is Cologne 2015, just a Counter-Strike tournament. I mean, this is one of the many esports that are popular. And people often say, wow, I didn't realize so many people got together to watch a game. And it's great that it's getting coverage. But this is only the top end. This is the tip of the iceberg. The rest is still submerged. It's underwater. It's out of sight. For the ordinary gamer, there is nothing, no social setting to enjoy our esports the way we want to. So. That's why I set up NSC League as being a grassroots activity. I destigmatize in two ways. First off, I destigmatize uh, towards people that know nothing about esports. I let them design the logo and the flyers. Logo was designed by a guy from Twente, and the flyers designed from uh, Tama, who actually studies at AUC. They knew nothing about esports, but by showing them that I take esports seriously and that it is to be taken seriously, they tell other people, and th so the snowball keeps rolling. We had a beautiful tournament, esports tournament, at our university last year. And it was great because not only could people see that there were people that were actually interested in this, they could also see that they could, they could <laughs> cheer for people that actually really enjoyed this, even though they knew nothing about the game. Secondly, I destigmatized towards the players. There are a lot of players that are not proud of them being very good at the game, necessarily, but there are also players that think it's only for the top end. I get people saying constantly, I would love to join, but I don't think I'm good enough, because people automatically assume that to do it in a social setting, you're supposed to be the top end. I show them that it's something for all levels, individual or team, college or university, man or women, because that is a real problem too. 
the amount of women that openly can state that they game, not that much. But we have girls that actually join in in NSC because it's an open environment. Now, one of the best things that happened in NSC is we had five individuals. Uh, they didn't know each other. They came from other universities. They uh, signed up individually to the website to find a team. I put them together in a team. Not only are they doing quite well, I found out last week that they actually bought tickets to go to the European finals in Rotterdam in April because they really wanted to go together as friends. I'm now going to show you a clip. Uh, make sure you listen, even if you don't understand what's going on, make sure you listen to the voices of the commentators. Do it. But meanwhile, they're in the base. Yellow Star's trying to defend them in the base. Peggy's trying to take the Nexus down. Is anyone going to be able to deal with this one? Catches him with another axe. He's very low. No! It's a funny reaction. People often tell me they don't understand how I can get so emotional about a bunch of pixels. But if you really, if you really want to go at it from that angle, then you can literally floor any other regular sport by saying it's just 22 people running across a ball, running, chasing a ball across a pitch, or just two people with rackets doing something with a ball across a net. You can, you can abstract anything by looking at what it literally is. But I think the fact that so many people can get so emotional about this should be the only legitimacy it needs. And lastly, I think this fear, this, this negative view, is all driven by, as I said, by fear. I think the negative view of gaming is driven by the fear that our kids in the future will live in a kind of cyberspace environment, completely sucked into their screens, have no idea what's going on out, uh, outside. But what, what you saw here is that literally the split second they're done with that game. They throw off their headsets, they come together as a team, as friends, but more importantly, because they can't wait to talk about what just happened in that little screen in real life. Thank you very much.